There are so many light novels out there that it's impossible to try them all. And while people will always praise the likes of ReZero, Classroom of the Elite, and Mushiko Tensai, what about those who want something a little bit different? Here are five great light novels you might have missed out on. Sasaki is a middle-aged man who is tired and unfulfilled about his dead-end job. He decides to adopt Peeps, a pet Jarvis Sparrow. However, it turns out that Peeps is a magician from another world. Peeps bestows Sasaki with magic and the two decide to jump between the two worlds to exploit the economy buying and trading regular household products. And then the psychics arrive. And then the angels and demons, the death games, the magical girls and the kaiju. That's right, in Sasuke and Peeps it manages to combine just about every trope you can think of into one big melting pot of a story. And all of this surprisingly works. Each aspect of the series gets about a volume or so to get things up and running and then it moves on to the next while also retaining everything that we've already got. It works really well in that aspect. There's a lot of stuff in this brewing pot but it's given the care and attention that it deserves. A lot of characters are introduced but you're given enough time with them that you kind of have a feeling of what's going to happen with them or you kind of get used to them and enjoy them for what they are. Sasaki and Peeps is definitely one to keep an eye out in my opinion. Especially if you read a lot of tropey titles like I have and are wanting something that kind of not only honours them but also jokes around with the absurdity of how many different tropes there are while also giving something a little bit different. Folklore stories. Nearly every town has one. From toilet bound Hanako to that house that may potentially be haunted. Where do these rumours or stories originate? And is there any truth to them? In Associate Professor Akira Takasuki's conjecture folklore stories, we look at the origins of, well, folklore stories. Set as a set as a group of no, no, set as a number of individual folklore stories, all woven together with an overall narrative. It's gives us something entertaining to read while also making sure each individual story is carefully detailed. It makes things that little bit more interesting. The neighbour who shouldn't exist, the girl who spits up needles and the house to another world are all stories that this particular volume covers. Each of these stories is out of the ordinary. Or are they? Sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction and with these stories, there's often more than meets the eye. If you like the supernatural and a little bit of a mystery, then this one I think is certainly for you. We go from a house to another world to a restaurant to another world in our next title. And this one has been a long time coming. It's been two years since I originally started reading Restaurant to Another World and still I am hooked. This one is about food, of course it is, but each item on the menu has a story behind it. Every Saturday, the restaurant Western Cuisine Nekoya's door connects to another world, and from half elves to samurai, dragons, halflings, fairies, vampires, and many more come to sample its delights. This one has absolutely terrific world building, which is quite surprising considering the vast majority of the series takes place in a restaurant. What we also get is, well, doorways to each character and their predicament. The reason why they need or want to go to this restaurant. And with them doorways we see a little bit more lore, or a little bit more of each world. And this is only greatly improved on as the series goes on, as we start to see characters that start to become entwined with others. And of course we have to talk about the food. 
This is a light novel that will make your stomach growl with anticipation as it adapts not only the foods of Japan, but also the West too, in excruciating detail. This is literally the food porn of light novels. While I absolutely adore this series and would 100% recommend you guys check it out, especially now that it looks like the light novels starting to get that little bit more harder to find, I do have one big problem with this one. And it's one thing I will pass on to you guys. Never, ever read it on an empty stomach. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have a bit of a soft spot for series, well, more so with Isekai, that have people reincarnated, but it's not just generic overpowered. I always love it when there's something unique about them. Perhaps they changed into something strange like a vendor machine or a slime. Or perhaps they have a unique skill that only they can do. And Maiden of the Needle delivers on that. This is the novel series about sewing claws. And as bizarre as it sounds, this one really does work. Yui Yui is reincarnated into a noble family of tailors in another world. She is treated badly by them, but has one comfort. The fairies she befriends by fixing their claws. She is considered tantless and is eventually disowned by her family, only to be found by a noble with an eye for her talents. Now I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys. The first half of volume one really does rush into things. It kind of has that aspect of the author wants to just get things set up and kind of skips out on a little few details but once it gets going you know you're fitting for something particularly special if you guys liked a sentence of a bookworm and i certainly hope you guys do you probably have a pretty good time with this one if you want something a little bit more magical with spiders and fairies do recommend checking this one out now i'm going to be honest this is not going to be on everybody's top five list but there's a great little story to be had here, and it's definitely going to be found to be an underrated gem. While we're on the topic of magic, it's time for Magic Hour. Well, magic few minutes anyway, with a Margie Brilliant Park. One of my all-time favourite titles. There is nothing more magical than a theme park. When I was young, I absolutely adored adored games like Roller Coaster Tycoon, and in Amagi Brilliant Park, that just reinforces my love of the theme park. It's literally magical. Written by Shoji Gato, who also created Full Metal Panic, this one is an absolute must-have if you want a comedy slice of life. That also takes place in a theme park. It's very much Shoji's work. You get a lot of aspects in here that you also got in Full Metal Panic, especially with Full Metal Panic, Fumofu, or, well, the short story collections that are coming very soon. Amaki Brilliant Park, well, it's just something special, and unfortunately, it's probably never going to get a physical release. And even more unfortunately, it actually is one that's been on hiatus for what seems like well forever but there is enough content there is enough volumes here released that i could see if you see it. it's worth still checking out from costumed mascots that beat up the guests to pirates taking over the water park a marky brilliant park has that quirky sense of humor that you just can't help but smile at and if you guys are like me and checked out the 2014 cure annie anime that was 2014 that was nearly 10 years ago. Oh, that makes me feel old. Well, there's plenty more content here for you. Pretty much all of the season, well, it dips into volumes here and there, but a lot of the season is actually contained in the first volume. So there's plenty of extra content if you like them characters, along with a few changes that make the light novel feel that little bit more special. A lot of the characters are expanded on, as you'd expect, and there's a lot more fun to be had. And those are five great volumes that you guys might have missed out on. 
Have you got an underrated gem that you want to recommend? Let me know in the comments. And if you did like this, remember to leave a like and consider subscribing. There's plenty more light novel content on the channel. And, well, as for me, I'm going to read. See you on the next chapter. <laughs>